First up, Larry Fitzgerald. He's a pro bowler on the football field, and he is revered for the amazing work he does off the field. Larry's generous heart has led to hundreds of thousands of dollars being raised for nonprofits each year. I went one-on-one -on -one with Larry, not about football, but about faith, philanthropy, and fatherhood. How is a legend made? It starts with a great childhood. I had two wonderful loving parents. We grew up in a middle class area and uh, you know, I was exposed to a, a wonderful array of opportunity, um, philanthropics and, and sports. I mean, it was a, a great mix. My brother and I both went to private schools, but grew up in the inner city. Larry Fitzgerald Jr. grew up in Minneapolis, a product of his environment. My parents didn't try to shelter us. Um, you know, so we saw a lot of good, we saw a lot of bad. My mom worked in the state health department, so she was around a, a lot of people who were battling HIV and AIDS, and so we saw death at a young age. Um, we saw life, we saw how precious the balance of life can be, and I think it was a, a great learning experience for us, um, just to be able to treasure every day that you have on this earth, because tomorrow's not guaranteed to any of us. Valuing life for Fitzgerald is beginning each day with preparation, a lesson instilled as a child. The key with us is what, what do you want to do? What, what do you want to be? Like, how do you plan to get there? And what do you need to do to get there? And you know, those things are always talked about in our house. And I kind of lost track of it as I got to high school, got a little older, um, you know, my grades started to slip. I forgot about the importance of crossing all my T's and dotting all my I's. And I learned a valuable lesson, you know, not being able to go to college my first year. I had to go to prep school to get myself together, and I was able to do that. But it taught me a valuable lesson that things can be taken from you very quickly if you don't focus. If you don't prepare like you need to prepare every single day, things can be taken from you. And I didn't want anything that I could control like that to ever happen again. Just as he was getting the hang of being a young man, at age 19, Larry would face his most difficult lesson, death losing his mother to breast cancer. My mother was, was a special lady. She's a really special lady. She, she's such a humble, hardworking person. I never forget the last time she checked in. You know, I, I think she knew that she was, she was dying at that point. I was a friend of hers that was also in R Riverside Hospital. And before she checked herself in, she went to go visit her friend uh, to, to see how she was doing. And, and that like characterizes my mother and, and what she stood for. And I remember, I, my mom found out that I, I had got to, I made the honor roll, you know, my freshman year, and it was uh, at 3.5. She was like, but you're capable of a 4.0, though. <laughs> and I'm so happy, like, man, my mom, I'm doing I'm good. I'm this close. Yes, <laughs> but you're capable of so much better. And that, that just let me know, like, okay, mom, I got it, I got well, it. Well, don't got rest it. on your laurels. No, never, you know, never rest on your laurels, never, right. never. <laughs> Discipline, it's a cardinal rule for Fitzgerald, who's now raising two sons of his own. What does fatherhood mean to you? Well, I think it's very important. It's, uh, for me, uh, you're tasked with essentially shaping two young men that, um, you know, can go any direction, but it's your responsibility to kind of direct their paths, um, teach them the right way, teach them how to treat people, um, teach them how to work, t teach them how to be respectful, um, and just go about life doing it the right way. And, and, and that's a great, great, great job. You're not a typical dad, you're Larry Fitzgerald. Like no, how I'm, do you I'm separate a typical the dad. two? I got, we got football, uh, baseball practice tonight, you know, it's soccer practice, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's no different from any other day, you know, shuttling the kids around, picking them up, making sure their homework is done, you know, it's. I know you you like to take your boys, pick them up from school. Yeah, pick them, that's take, a very them take them to school, pick them up from school. Yeah, I, I like that because it gives you that, that alone time in the car, mm -hmm. you know, 20 minutes to talk about whatever they want to talk about, what's important, you know, what their goals are for the day, what their goals are for the, for the week, you know, the spelling test they have or, mm -hmm. You know, just in anything that you want to talk about. So I, 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 uh, I really enjoy that time. Fitzgerald, a wide receiver, carries his compassion into philanthropy. I wanted to establish uh, a charity for myself when I when I got to the uh, to the NFL that I would be able to support breast cancer research, um, which eventually took my mother's life, and also wanted to do something that could give back to the youth. In 2005, the Larry Fitzgerald First Down Fund kicked off, providing donations for computers, books, chess tournaments, and playgrounds for children. Now, especially as needed with all the, the budget cuts we've had recently, there's so many organizations that do great work that just 
don't have the funding anymore. So we try to fund a lot of uh, programs here locally and back home in Minneapolis that are that are serving to you. Larry's nonprofit also passionate about breast cancer prevention and finding a cure. In his off time, Larry attends seminars and talks with breast cancer survivors. He shares with me their conversations. What helped you get through it? You know, what were some of the things that you would do differently? Um, and what would you say to women who have just been diagnosed with breast cancer? I mean, so I try to understand, you know, their plights and, and what we can do as organizations to, you know, to, to help them along with their battles. Fitzgerald knows a lot about battles, facing opponents on the football field as the cornerstone of the Arizona Cardinals franchise. Entering his 15th season, Fitz calls Phoenix home, recently telling a Minneapolis newspaper, if I'm not playing in Arizona, I won't be playing anywhere. They took me in as a 20 year old, snotty nose, know it all. They, they, grew, they grew up with me, um, they supported me, they allowed me to raise my family here. Um, and I'm just, I'm in debt to this community. I love it. This is home for me now. And, um, you know, I'm going to continue to serve this community as long as I live. This Walter Payton Man of the Year, 11 time Pro Bowler, and future Hall of Famer still has a lot to accomplish. I'm not really one to ever sit back and smell the roses. This is not how I'm wired. You know, all I see is things that I can work on and improve on. I don't ever look at what I've done or what I did, you know. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to be judged on how we make people feel. And um, I just want to make people feel good. Do you have any regrets? Regrets. I would have handled the relationship with my mother a little bit better when I, when she was alive. How so? At the end. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't communicate with her like I should have. Um, we got into a little fight. So I would definitely go back and change that. I, I would tell her I was sorry for being a, an idiot, you know, um, before she passed away. I would definitely tell her that. and. Um, tell her I love her and I, I would thank her for everything she poured into me for 19 years. Such a great guy. The Larry Fitzgerald First Down Fund will make grants totaling at least $600,000 this year. If you would like more information or if you would like to donate to the Larry Fitzgerald First Down Fund, please visit LarryFitzgerald.com.